in Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8, was gave a parable. The summary of that parable is that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. The translation said, and not to faint. And he gave the parable in this way that there was a widow and a judge. Widow is a symbol or description of the powerless, the defenseless. And there are things in life that we have nothing to do. That, that we have no power in ourselves to change. Those areas, they are defenseless. God has made a provision because of the scripture. The Bible told us that God is the husband of the widow. So the Bible said there was a judge in that city who never feared God or regard man. There was a widow and the widow went to the man and said, give justice. Justice is rearrange things the way they ought to be. How many of us want God to rearrange things the way they ought to be? Of sin and evil under the sun. The world can't bear it. I've seen princes walk on their legs and serve and ride upon horses. Give us justice. Let us have true people to have the right heart in right places. Give justice to me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. This is where the challenge is. We can't talk about trust if you cannot and do waiting. But after what he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, there is something so powerful about this widow, she's so persistent. She keeps coming back and back. They say, come back tomorrow, she's there tomorrow. She's not easily worn out. She's not easily taken away. And we are coming God to, back to God's presence this year and telling him, we are not worn out by waiting. We are still strong in faith, glorifying God, praising the Lord. Because as we are taught on Thursday, we judge him faithful. Hallelujah. Yeah, but because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Let's by a continual coming, she will me. Then the Lord said, hear what that unjust just said. Our God not avenge his in that story, the unjust judge was a very wrong, very poor rep replication of God. God understand himself, these are the principles where me and the unjust judge join. They are the ones that bring justice for people. This is where we differ. Said, Shall God not avenge his own elect who cry to him day and night? Though he bears long with them, I tell you, we avenge them speedily. So God said, I do my own thing speedily. I answer, the unjust judge delays. But yet I bear long. God said to the question of God. Jesus said to the question of the faithfulness of God in verse, verse 8. That God is not like that unjust judge. God will do his own speedily. And he raised another question. Nevertheless. Because in that story, the problem was the unjust judge. The widow was persistent. The widow is a reflection of the type of people that we are. But when God, when Jesus said to the place of God, turned the question around and said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, we really find faith on the earth. In other words, it might not be a problem of the judge in our time, it might be a problem of the widow. Are you following that? It might be a problem of the world. We are living in a world where people can hardly exercise trust. Where people can hardly wait. For many reasons. We are living in a world where it's almost impossible to find trustworthy men. We are living in a world that when people say good morning, you have to lift up your eye. Check whether the stars are out. So 
today, I'm not focusing on God. I'm focusing on you. I've said to you that God is trustworthy. That can you, are you trustworthy? That's why our teaching today is having trustworthy men without trusting in men. One of the things we have taught clearly in this season is that it is cost to trust in man. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Cost is he who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. You don't need to live too long to know that it's a risky adventure to put your trust in people. Have you noticed it? Hosanna today, crucify him tomorrow. Some of your greatest say it's not everybody that is following you that is your fan. A cheater can be running after a gazelle. But it's not his fan, it's his predator. So sometimes you have to look back and check why people are really even following you. But you can't be too sure. That's the type of world to live in today. Hosanna today. And what? Sometimes when you get to this point, you now want to say, I don't want to have, I don't want to trust in men. But are there many things we can do in this world without men? First John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. First John chapter 4. Verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, it's a lie. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? No matter the encounters in the spirit, God still dwells in the realm of the unseen. You have more constant relationship and relating with men. Who you see every day. That's where they are somewhere in your memory. Are you following me? And you can't even claim that you love God without loving people. It's a, it's a reflection of love. So in verse 21 he said. This is the commandment we have from him. That he who loves God. Must also love his brother. In other words. Part of your loving God. Relating with men with love. Are you following me, church? But don't forget, men. Let's look at that Micah chapter 7 that we read. Men. Risky. Who is me? If I'm like those who gather summer fruit, like those who glean vintage grapes, there's no cluster to eat of the first ripe fruit which my soul desires. The faithful man has perished from the earth. Someone said the faithful man has perished from the earth. Yoruba say that the tree that is too good does not stay too long in the forest. Somebody will cut it down. When you are too good, it's almost like a risk. Because the tree that is good, everybody wants it to make furniture. Ones that are totally less. He bypassed them. Get what I'm try trying to talk about. The faithful man has perished from the earth. There is no one upright among them. They all lie wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. Don't show that one. When a man die, when a man bury him. That's the world we live in. Every man is hunting. When people are serving you, you have to be, you are still watching, waiting if they want. When people are coming to you, what are you looking for? I don't got to believe in your ministry, you are this, you are this. Mm -hmm. Calm down. That they may successfully do evil with both hands. The prince asks for gift. The judge seeks a bribe. The great man utters his evil desire. They all scheme. What's the language of that in the contemporary time? Everybody is sharp. 
The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is a thorn. You know, the thorn stands upright, but it is very dangerous. The day of your watchman and punishment comes. Now shall they shall be their perplexity. Do not trust in a friend. Any of us here have had five best friends in your life. It's my best friend. I go boyfriend, one go best friend, one. That bad. Who is that person? It's my friend. Us. How many of you have had five best friends in your lifetime? What happened to the last best friend? <laughs> I came to me. Best friend traveled without telling him. How many of you have seen your friend's wedding on Facebook before? Is this not to me? Because when they change status, now marry. <laughs> That's when he said, eh? Not only them, you two have done it. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in the company. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. A young babe. For son dishonors father. When you are reading this thing, it should trouble you. Daughter rises against mother. Have you not seen mothers that force their children to marry who they don't love? That are ghetto. Who has a On our story around. The guy is but the guy is not. Say, 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 don't worry, it's God that will change people. God that will change people. We will pray. Uh, this is Pastor Tyus' number. Just be calling it. I can't help you when you are in disobedience. Because obedience is better than some of us. After we have lived all our life in disobedience, we now be looking for prayer contractor. I will turn your story around. For son dishonors father, daughter rises against her mother, daughter in law against mother in law. That one is almost consistent. A man's enemies <laughs> are the men. Of his own household. Verse 7. Therefore I will look to the Lord. This guy concluded. He looked around. He looked at every form of human relationship. And saw that trust. Is not common. Now the question is. How do you respond to that? Do you. Start. Joining the bandwagon of faithful men. In John chapter 6, from verse 66, the Bible says Jesus was teaching certain things, and many of his disciples from that time went back and walked with him no more. And what was the next question of Jesus? Do you also, many of you will become conformed to something because it's the prevalent thing? Everybody is going. Jesus' word should be, don't go. Just ask you. You have to make a choice. Who you want to be. In the midst of a faithless world, you have to make a choice. Who you want to be. In the midst of a world where people's words is no, is no longer their bond, you have to make a choice. Who you want to be. Do you also want to go? I know you have told me what everybody does. What do you want to do? I know you have told me how everybody is unfaithful and how everybody never keeps their word. The question is, what do you, you as a person, who do you want to be? What do you want to do? You also want to go away and they said, Lord, where do we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. In James chapter 3 verse 9, James chapter 3 verse 9, Bible was speaking about how people use their tongues. Said with, with our tongue, we bless God and we curse men. Said these things ought not to be. We have to choose who we want to be. Who do I want to be? Hallelujah. Because we want to find trustworthy men. May you be one of them. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. 
Let's start from there this morning. Nehemiah had been building the wall of Jerusalem. The funny thing about Nehemiah, that he was a king's cup bearer, he was only given a tithe. So he, he had his job in Shushan the palace. He was given a time to come to Jerusalem and rebuild. It means he had to return. What do you do when all you have when all you have suffered for and labored for have to let it go? Who do you look for? He has risked, he has fought Sambalat and Tobiah. He had resisted false and evil prophecies. Against him, I had to go. Then it was when the wall was built that had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Anani, and Ananiah, the leader of the citadel, for he was a faithful man. Oh, we are in the crisis of trustworthy men. We, we still need him. He was a faithful man and feared God more than many. I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. Where they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station, another in front of his own house. In other words, Nehemiah believed that he had people of Israel together. He didn't see a crisis coming from within. He envisaged the crisis coming from outside. So he said, just keep the city. Bad the city. He didn't know. That the trust is going to be tested first. It's not from outside. It's from within. When I come, I find faithful. But I find men who are faith. Nehemiah believed it was the people outside that were going to be a trouble to them. Proverbs 20 verse 6 says, Proverbs 20 verse 6 says, Every man will proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? Micah told us they are scarce. Yet Proverbs 25 verse 19 said, Proverbs 25 verse 19 says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a bad tooth or a foot out of joint. Go invest confidence in wrong people for your own pain. Have you ever tried to walk on a dislocated foot? Every movement you make, what should be the support to the to the pain? In Jesus' name, you have to use men. You have to know the type of men. Are you marry? You? you can't marry. If you're a man, you will marry a man. The woman. I'm sorry. If you're a man, get me, get me. If you're a man, you will marry a woman. Male and female made them. That's how, that's how some people will go and cut nonsense out of you. If you are a man, you must marry a woman. If you are a woman, not here, not even here. I even bring, they said, who is, he said, I don't know whether it's male or female. I, you, you have not started cancer. You are not even born again. If you are a woman, you will marry a man. You have to be clarifying this thing. Nevertheless, can't just marry any man. Because confidence in an unfaithful man <laughs> in the time of trouble that some people the, the day you will know you make a bad decision when crisis comes. Nobody can be with you when anything, everything is going together. But when crisis comes, you will know, ah! Had, have you ever seen people a, a little problem strike. That question everything you have done. They are the first people to question. I was telling Pastor. I told Pastor that time that we should be careful with these ACs we are buying. But what? I mean, they, 
problem is just five minutes old. Not two months. That's the problem. From that point, you are not handling what got, went wrong. You are handling people. What people say more as goes further than even the issues that you are handling. May you be a faithful man. Nehemiah put his brother and the man in charge of Jerusalem and believed that everything was fine. In Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 4. That, let me. Where's the book of Nehemiah? After Ezra. Verse 4. Now before this, Eliashib the priest, having authority over the storerooms of the house of God, was allied with Tobiah. You are afraid of Tobiah. He's outside. But the priest, did you discover that he didn't put anybody in charge of the temple? All he put people in charge of was the city. Because he felt the priest of God already had dedication to God. The first place he saw attack, let me show you, it was a lad with Tobiah, verse 5. He had prepared for him a large room where previously they've stored grain offering, frankincense, articles, tithes of grain, new wine and oil, which were commanded to be given to Levites and singers and gatekeepers and offering from the priest. But during all this time, I was not in Jerusalem. But when he came back, he didn't have a challenge outside. That the challenge inside the temple. For in the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes of Babylon, I returned to the king, and after certain days, I obtained leave from the king. When I came to Jerusalem, I jumped in. I discovered the evil that Eliashib, who is Eliashib, the priest, had done for Tobiah in preparing room for him in the courts of God of the house of God. He grieved me. When he was going, he said, "Shut the gate." Anyone was looking at him. What's the gate? The entrance that determines what comes in and what goes out. Get preparation for the gate. He knew that right within the city itself, they are making room. Not just within the city, the house of God. Grieve me bitterly. And you see on this is Say, I threw out all the household goods of Tobiah out of the room. Harry was a forerunner of Jesus Christ who was going to cleanse them. This, this is where it was first fulfilled. I commanded them to cleanse the room. I brought back into them the articles of the house of God with a grain offering and the frankincense. You know, I realized that portions for the Levites have not been given to them. Each of the Levites and singers who did the work had gone back to his field. Contended with the rulers. Why is the house of God forsaken? I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then all Judah brought the tithe of the grain and the new wine and the oil to the storehouse. Appointed treasurers. This is the thing. When men fail you, you still need men. Did you hear what I just said? When men fail you, you still need men. I appointed treasurers over the storehouse. Shema, the priest. Zadok, the scribe. Of the Levites and mentioned them, therefore they were considered faithful, and their task was to distribute to the brethren. The counter to unfaithfulness is God continually raising trustworthy men in our midst. You get what I just said there. Because when God, when that attack came by the force of unfaithful men, I still needed men, but I needed men of quality who are considered to be faithful. I used to follow in that. They remember me, oh my God, concerning this. If you read that entire chapter, he discovered he had more problems. The Bible says, after that time, he discovered that the people of Tyre were coming to sell the people of Israel. And John is, if there's no buyer, there wouldn't have been a seller. Because the people of Israel who left their gates open on the Sabbath day that they should not trade. That's why the people of Tyre were bringing things to sell. He thought he had a problem outside to discover he had a greater problem inside. 
Are you following me? And he began, he had to come and shut the door and said, and told the people of Tyre, don't bring anything on Sabbath day. And he would say again, Lord, remember me for what I have done. I not in it. Of Israel had intermarried the people. That entire chapter showed him. The problem you are looking, fighting outside. Within. I don't have time to show you in the book of Ezra. When he was speaking about that intermarriage in Ezra chapter 9, he said the hand of the leaders and the rulers were the topmost in it. People he appointed, he will be overseeing this. By the time he came back, they were the ones. They were the ones causing the real problem. Are you following me? Give me verse, verse 3 of that Ezra 9. Verse 2. Let, let's read verse 2. But they are taking some of them wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the people of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and the rulers have been foremost in this trespass. In the hand of leaders are foremost in a trespass. Where do you want to start? That was why we read the second story. The story of Saul. I was thinking this morning, whether it was the year 2000, I had a meeting audit David Jonathan connection. Everybody speaks of the unique loyalty between David and Jonathan. The type of loyalty with they always do. Because the loyalty of Jonathan is a strange type. The Bible told us in 1 Samuel chapter 31 from verse 1 to 6 about the death of Saul. The Philistines fought against Israel. The men of Israel fled from the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines followed out after Saul and his sons. The Philistines killed Jonathan. Jonathan was a very different person from his father. Jonathan died the day his father died. When David was singing that lamentation, he said in their life they were together. In their death, they were never divided. Every point you saw, so even when Saul was in, in crisis, Jonathan was there. Don't get it. Who that don't have crisis, you are not there. Something has happened though. In where? Something struck. I was watching a series of meetings. But the major prophet of God that I know has been having health challenges for less than five to six years. To hold his hand, stand on the pulpit. I don't know whether it's book of Parkinson or Fred Jonathan David. It's been a blessing to some of us. I didn't look at him. Look at the church. I wanted to see. And I was thinking, a story flashed in my spirit of the day David went to battle and a Philistine made a new sword and it, and it was almost killing David until the Bible said, Abishai rose up and struck the man and delivered it. And they told David, no longer go to battle with us because you are the light of Israel. Anybody can run after David when he kills a Goliath. Are you following? But when you see David's weakness, you check whether you trust what David says. You know why everybody shoots and cover up? Because people are not faithful. Even when they are crying, they would rather be shouting and make it look like they're in control. Problem shared is half solved depending on who you share it with. 
to share some big things with some people that have just gone on network news. Between me and you. I have the between me and you. I go go for Kobola. She then five minutes after I said, between me and you. Everybody will come to church and say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Say, so, why are we not talking to confess your fault to one another? Because it will not be followed with pray with one to, for one another. It will be followed with. Even when people say, let's pray for pastor. You know, they say, when people will talk, you will think the question, the problem is more than what is happening. Mm, this are happening. They've left you with an arrow that will trouble you throughout the night. Because when you hear things are happening, you are beginning to think maybe pastor took their money. He said, pastor took their money. Be a very sorry, but things are happening. Every time I pray, they've caused more problems than not talking. At the time you say, "Why? Well, what is it? I just noticed I went to his house. He was tired. <laughs> That's what you created all this drama for. Glory to God. Jonathan died with his father. Let's read, continue to read that place. And if you go to verse 8, the Bible began to describe for us how Saul died. It happened. You know, the Philistines came upon him. The Bible says it happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons. Every time you see, even in death, they found Saul and what? And his sons. That fallen on Mount Gilboa. Verse 9. They cut off his head and stripped off his armor. They sent water throughout the land of the Philistines. To proclaim in the temple of their idols among the people. They put his armor in the temple of the Asherahs. They fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Now when the inhabitants of Gabesh Gilead heard that Philistines had done to Saul. All the valiant men arose and traveled all night. Took the body of Saul and the body of his sons. So what they did to Saul. They did to his sons. In life they were together. In death they were not divided. In life, how many times have people that you are together have become divided? You are not dead, though. You are still alive. You don't, you understand? You are still alive. The only thing that happened to you is that you change position. We deny you, we don't know you again. I'll give you a license to start listening to land. Just remember. Now, I, I wasn't born a Christian. I got born again. <laughs> so, so, I know things. But I have renewed mind. <laughs> In 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, where we read, O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor fields of offering. The, they are the shield of the mighty cast away. The shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. The sword of Saul did not return empty. In the day of victory, they were together. On clean side by side. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives. And in their death, they were not divided. Swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. They brought victories together. Another painful part. Suffered defeat. Oh, o daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. Though Saul has become bad news recently. But remember the days he used to clothe you with scarlet and with luxury. With ornaments of gold on your apparel. The victories he wrought. How many people could be forgetting today's world? How many of you remember how people went out of their way to get you? I know you are forgotten now because something has happened. Something has happened. Eh, 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 something has happened. Who labor? People who decide to follow you. Committed to you. You don't need to beg. Now, others that have it. Remember Saul who you. 
But my focus this morning is Jonathan, strange man. If there was any person who had the right not to be with Saul on that two ground, it was Jonathan. When God was describing the type of king the king of Israel will be in 1 Samuel 8, 10 to 21, he said he will take your sons, take perfumers, he will take your sons to run. He didn't say he will take his son. Exempted by his own children. The first battle of Saul in 1 Samuel 11, verse 4 to 14. Saul was coming from the midst of a field. And suddenly, he saw the people of Israel weeping. And they said, the, the, the Harmonites have decided to remove our eye. And the Bible says, Saul broke his, what do you call it? His yoke of oxen. And he said, whoever does not go out with Saul and somewhere to battle, this is what will be done to his oxen. So the people who follow Saul, followed because of what? If there was somebody whose yoke and oxen would not be broken, others were compelled. Jonathan followed. Not because of the risk of anything he has. Are you hearing? Most of the people, that's why most people follow Saul, but the Bible says they followed him trembling. Which means the only reason why they were on the battleground was if we go back, they would destroy our yoke. And our oxen. It was an insurance. They are following in him to battle was an insurance for their, their farm. Jonathan had no such strength, yet he was there. Faithful man who can farm. First Samuel 13, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel 13, 1 to 4. Saul reigned one year when he had reigned two years over Israel. Saul chose for himself 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash, in the mountains of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah. And the rest of the people is sent away, every man to his tent. Jonathan attacked the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gibeah. And the Philistines out of it, then Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land. Let the Hebrews hear. Now, all Israel had it said that Saul had attacked. Who attacked the garrison of the village? They say he attacked it. Because Jonathan saw his extension of the operation of the rule of his father. He didn't put his name on the attack. He attacked the beauty trumpet. He said, Saul. On that. People can't do anything. His name is not on why churches spring up every not only calling it's a major challenge of consecration in these days west for the city that's why all of us are, are, are doing the same space with celebrities all our pastors have become celebrities and they drive into church they film them I think I'm can I you can I you Their children are going to school every day. My first daughter. Guys, there are battles out there. And some of you know, but I'm the one doing the work, but they don't put my name. I'd rather start my own fellowship of Christ International, where I will be general overseer and chairman board of trustees so that you will face the battles of trustees alone. You get what I'm saying? So, and by the time you get over 16, verse 16 to 23 of that first Samuel 13, Saul, Jonathan, his son, and the people present with him remain in Gibeah of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamp in Michmash. 
Leaders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company onto the road of Ophir, the land of Shua. Continue. Another company turned to the road of Betharon. Another company turned to the road of the border that overlooks the valley of Zeboim towards the wilderness. There was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, let the Hebrews make sword of spears. But all Israelites would go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattocks, his axe, and his sickle. And the charge for sharpening was a pin for plowshares, the mattocks, the forks, and the axes, and to set the coins of the guards. 22. And it came to pass on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. But they were found with Saul and Jonathan his son. Come to go to battle. Every time you hear Saul, was a very strange type of relationship. It was a bond. But the one he had with David, David looked at him, David said, the relationship you have with him surpasses anything anybody can have with a woman. Listen, what other relationship can be stronger than the one you have with your wife? It's only in that relationship that one plus one is one. Two shall be one. He said, Jonathan, what I'm seeing in you surpasses the love of women. Love of women can be deeply sentimental. Support to a woman who she loves. Do not see what you have seen. Nothing you can do about it. The challenge I've had. When you are doing logical things, can't you see what Pastor Shahed did? No, he didn't do well. But you know it is all right. Hallelujah. In First Samuel 14, Probing into Jonathan. It happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let's go over to the garrison of the Philistines on the other side. But he did not tell his father. He had no business going here. Skin is what? His own life. He was not commanded by his father. That's what the, the, the armor bearer told him. Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree. Who are with him were about 600 men. Saul had 600 men. Jonathan had one hammer bear. That's four. That's five. And hey, Jonathan said to the young man who boys, I'm going to come, let's go back to Garrison. Maybe that the Lord will work for us. For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. His armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then. I am here. I am with you. We are 600 men are not going. Just called you and said, Let us go. Say, Here I am. What will you say? Let's first go and bring. I am here with you according to your heart. The Bible said they climbed into that hill, and as Jonathan was killing, the Amobiara was killing after him. It was a great victory, but that's not where I'm going. In that story, before jo because Jonathan was not there, the father had given a rash oath that none of Israel must eat that day until he has victory. And when the victory started, the Bible said Jonathan was pursuing the enemy, then he got to a place I told you before. Saw honey. The honey was not static, it was dripping. An hungry man seeing dripping on. It's almost automatic. Ah, I just dipped a little. When he touched it, somebody said, Ah, your father said, That has done what that's not even the focus. At the end of that chapter, 
Saul inquired of the Lord and God did not answer Saul. So Saul knew something was wrong. You know what Saul did? Saul said, anybody that broke that oath must die. I said, even if it's Jonathan, my son, because in his mind, Jonathan cannot be. Do you know what Saul did? Saul said, all Israel on one side, me and Jonathan on one side. He heard it. All Nigeria on one side, me and my wife. As long as mama is there, be against you. Because he felt when they cast the lot, God chose Saul and Jonathan. <laughs> then they cast the father lot. And he chose Jonathan. He said, What is this that you have done? This is the, the only time you will see Jonathan with Saul. Saul is rash. Saul is taking on God. Ever see Jonathan? The conspiracy to kill. Yet. Check yourself. Maybe you are that type of. You have gone. There are some of you people seated here. Embarrassed already. Some are even in lake. Just here. Hallelujah. 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 Going through the reading. Just the reading. Of activities. Without your spirit. You serve God. With your spirit. Just with your body. I'm making sense. You know the story. Jonathan said. They said tell me what you have done. Jonathan said I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod. I was in my hand. So now I must die. He was even ready to give his life to keep the hope of his father. Don't get it. All answer, God, do so more. You will surely die. <laughs> but the people said to Saul, Nathan died. Who has accomplished this great deliverance? And he said, certainly not. As the Lord lives, not one hair of his head will fall to the ground. Four years walked with God. I'm going to go into that word. Walk with God. See, this year, trusting to have a people around me that God can walk with. God can only walk with people. He has walked with God this day. When the people rescued Jonathan. He did not die. So, Lisa, this one not agree. But he has walked with God. Why? But the people there, when he told this armor bearer, that let's go for God is not restrained. See, let me tell you something. What you say will produce his fruit. The people say he has worked with God, but they didn't hear that what pushed them to do it was his faith in God. There are people that will not hear your speech, but they will see your fruit and have clear conclusions on what pushed you to do what you are doing. This that Jonathan did cannot be the work of man. It's a cooperation with God. And that's why I pray that what you have said to God in secret, it will bring, it will bring the results in the public. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Jesus said, what I said to you in secret place. Go to the house top and proclaim it. Are you following me? That's the pattern of God. You are the salt and you are the light. When the salt is working, you put it in soup, you don't see it. But it translates to light that is visible and, and identifiable. So listen, what I'm trying to tell you today, it's not about fighting for space. What you have wrought with God will speak for itself. Review. The thing you are doing is saying, faith and trust is not shouting around. For faith and trust has its fruit. Everybody will look at you and say, he could have only done that. How many of you have seen people and you know the only way somebody could have done this is because God spoke to them? There's a difference between God told me, God told me, God told me. And some people say, God is speaking to this person. The resolution, the capacity to go through, the capacity to stay faithful in the midst of that, in, that, that intense pressure could not have happened except God has spoken. That's how we know some people. This year, I will not only know God is speaking to you because you are talking. I will know God is speaking to you because you can stand. Are you following me? Your, your profiting is going to appear to all. 
Are you following me? It's going to, I'm going to see truly that when you chose your job, you chose it because God spoke to you. I'm not there when he spoke to you. Are you following me? But by the time you are taking that decision, walking your steps, it's going to be revealed that you did not walk in the flesh, but you walked in the spirit. That you didn't trust the harm of flesh, but you trusted in God. Are you hearing me? And it's going to be revealed. And that is what I want you to know. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Saul and Jonathan will continue. In 1 Samuel 18, after David had killed Goliath, Saul took David, never let him go. But Jonathan was near to the soul of David. Jonathan loved David at his own soul. Just that day, as Saul picked David as an adopted son, Jonathan automatically picked him as an adopted brother. Don't get it. It was just a, it was just a seamless transition. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Verse 3. Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan took off his robe that was on him, gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword, his bow, and his belt. Who took the decision? It's manifest. How was with us going? Father should for first consult them. Because if there was any person that should even get to his it's also it's Jonathan. But the person that should feel the threat came into a bond of covenant. The person that should not feel the threat was walked up. Because I don't have time. One day Saul wanted to kill Jonathan and threw a sword to him, threw an spear at him and said, don't you know that if the son of Jesse reigns, rules, gives, you will not rule. So I am doing this to protect you. The person they are protecting said, what's my problem? The person looked at David one day. He said, I know you will be king and I will be next after you. You get what I'm saying? He was ready to be next. Jonathan was a very strange soul. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel 19 verse 1 to 7. 1 Samuel 19. Verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son and all his servants, said that they should kill David. At this time, he didn't understand what was already happening inside Jonathan. He thought, wherever I go, I spoke to Jonathan. But Jonathan saw his son delighted greatly in David. Jonathan told David, he said, my father seeks to kill I don't know how to explain that. Then I come and say, Baba, um, also, therefore, be on your guard until morning. Stay in secret place and hide. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are. I will speak with my father about you. And that what I observe, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David. He saw his father. He ate his father. He ate David. He was a mediator. Let not the king sin against the servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you. And because his works have been very good towards you. And he took his life in his hand and killed the Philistine. And the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. Saw it and rejoiced. Why then do you sin against an innocent blood to kill David without a cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore as the Lord lives, not be Jonathan called David and Jonathan told him all these things. Jonathan brought David to Saul and he was in his presence. And in that was what Jonathan was playing. In chapter 20, Samuel 20, verse 1, the battle has intensified. The Bible said David fled from Nile to Ramah and went to Jonathan and said, What have I done? What is my iniquity? What is my sin before my father that he seeks my life? Jonathan said to him, By no means. You are not die. Indeed, my father will do nothing, either great or small, without first telling me. Who is that person here? How many of us still have this type of relationship? Yes. See you. Include you want to do bad things. I have those here of people here. That's what it means to pastor. Why people's faces are bright? It's because their faces are white. 
He wiped the dust out of it. When they came, there was dust on their head. You know what I'm saying? But when they are wiped, they look bright. May God send us more faithful pastors. Because my father, that was that without first telling me. Why should my father hide this thing? It's not so. David said, verse 3. David took an oath again and said, Your father knows certainly that I have found favor in your eyes. Therefore, he said, Do not let Jonathan know this. Because the last time he talked to you, you are the one that scored through everything. From that time, I'm talking to Jonathan. For Saul was still chasing him. Glory to God. Now, I've evidently shown you that the character of Jonathan is a very not common character. And in the world we are living today, because of the intensity of pressures that we all face, Jonathan is far from many of us. There are many of us here. Yes. That they are small. Because there are some people who make them something small. They become something big. They are magnifying lens. So you like to be a pastor. Wala niye. The pressures of our time is making faithfulness as commodity. You must fight. With everything inside of your heart not to be caught up. Second Timothy chapter three verse one to eight. Second Timothy three verse one to eight. The Bible says, "Perilous times will come. The men will be lovers of themselves. They will be boasters. They will be proud. They will be blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors." I'm going to say traitors. Or another translation said truce breakers. Perilous times make you. Pressure. Most of us are present everywhere without being present anywhere. Because of pressure. In our churches, we are only there physically. Because you know tomorrow morning when you Please, how many of you know what is waiting for you on your table? You're only passing Sunday morning. That's why I said, uh, you must, I must get that report tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. How many of you have said yes, sir, to people knowing fully where before you depart from the place? You toss the letter, where is that? Yes, so even if the world will come down, Pastor, hey, I mean. But when you stand there, say, so, um, um, Pastor, I'm getting that thing tomorrow. Yes, sir. Not you. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Traitors. Verse 2. Pressure. That's what I'm asking you. Because all men are going. Do you also want to go to? It's about the time to hold yourself. Choose who you want to be. Not allow the times to make you something else. Who Christian has self control, has a grip on himself. Are you following me? That this is where I want to be, not what the world will turn me to be. I want to be such a man that God can find trustworthy. Philippians 2, verse 19 to 24. It's not common to have trustworthy because of prayer. Philippians 2 19. But I trust, Paul said, in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like minded who will sincerely care. There will be others that will care, but not sincerely. How many of you sincerely care? Sincerely. Yours, 
sincerely. Or formal letter. Yours faithfully. That is everything you are seen in this letter today. People are talking to you now. You're in here. Have no one like mine who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own. Amen. had built everything and he looked at her. The fear of God to be a faithful man. Who did he commit the city to? And I feared God. There are certain things you only do because of your fear of God. Not because everything is right or convenient. Are you following me? It's the fear of God that puts you in that mode to do what is right perpetually. All seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. Of Christ Jesus. But you know it's a proven character. I'm say proven character. That as a son with his father, he has served with me in the gospel. I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself will also. I've always said it. If you read the epistles of Paul, you see that Paul always have names. Romans 15, Romans 16. It was all, there was a whole chapter there that was like names. It's Ubanos. It is. How can somebody that has that name said? Because everybody that's around me, I have no one. I can have a crowd, I have no one. It was not because Paul's ministry was not populated with men, but he had no one. Even at some who we care. But to get someone who we sincerely care. Another realm. Oh, are you hearing? Sincerely care. There are one or two people in the scriptures, in Paul's journey, that he placed those prime things on. One of them is Timothy. Another person is Titus. Second Corinthians 2 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 18. I ought Titus and sent our brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same spirit? Did we not walk in the same step? When I sent Titus to you, almost a replication of what I would do. That was why Jonathan attacked the camp of and they blew the trumpet, Saul had attacked the Philistines. Because they walked in the same steps, hearing me, and in the same spirit. We are living in an age where you are listening to me. And some people go and start church somewhere. Yeah. Oh, there's a... <laughs> this must be the voice of God, Holy Ghost, and sent up. Operating. And they gaze. What they are replicating? I like giving people more water. Drinks. Ah. Omi Agbon. Before you go out, every seller you brought here, please drop it at the door. Become a new creature. Let all things pass away. <laughs> are you following me? So that by the time we are sending you forth, you will not come back and say, ah. You know, there when we are teaching sea water as around deep, I was there. Because a lot of people are just listening. Their heart, they don't. No transformation is happening anywhere. Because they are only physically present. That's why people talk us. Are you following me? Just assume. That's why we told people that the pastor of, of, of Judas, pastor of Peter, in the same sample. That's never changed. From the beginning, just as we say, one of you is a devil. It was consistent in the end. He never, it wasn't like he used to visit the devil. The devil used to visit him. He was a devil. When they gave him off his treasurer, they gave him to laugh faithfulness. What did he laugh? Silly. Ah, opportunity. This was their king offering. Jesus doesn't count offering. Why? Because if he needs to feed 5,000, sometimes he will just break five loaves. 
if, <laughs> how many of you can be the treasure of a man that will not ask your friend? You know when the devil wants to tempt you, treasure will come. Men of God are running from being the treasurer of their ministry. Easiest way to hear. Let me first. Uh, I will return it. Then after some time, I'm worth it. Then after some time, I'm the ministry. May the Lord restore back the fear of God to the church. Fathers we met in the faith, when you send offerings to their ministry, they first ask me for me, for the ministry. And when it is not clearly defined, they would rather put it. You want to get to heaven and God say, hey, two million I sent to. So please, next time when you want to give faith rest, tell this faith, say, hey, faith rest. When you want to give to me, tell me it's me. Oh, I just, bless me. Go work out me. I just play, you, you, but you, you, you get the point. But today, the wolo at the wedding, there's no boundary. People have mixed up everything. It was fight the trustworthy men. So I begin to try to tie up. I'm trying. And I'm almost trying. In 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1, the Bible called us workers together with him. Other translation call us co-workers with God. Jonathan was a person that worked with God to bring deliverance to Israel. Are we together? As we two are co-workers with God and we must not receive the grace of God in vain. Are you following me, church? So if we are co-workers, we must work in the same frequency. And what will bat the same frequency? So what is Verse 11 to 13 of that place. Want to be co workers with God? The all Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is what? It's wide open. You are not restricted by us, you are restricted by your own affections. For you to be co worker with somebody, that must almost be the same level of yieldedness. Are you following me? The only time you begin to see a difference between Saul and Jonathan was when they were moving in opposing value. He said, in return for the same, I speak to you as children. You also, what? We are open to you. Be open. If you are not open, are you following me? Take a pail of water up with a cover. Put the cover on it. Take it to the and open the tap. Will you be full? There must be an opening in you for the opening in us to be profitable. Some of us are expecting the preacher to bulldoze through you and force his way to make you do this. No! That's not the way partnership happens. You must be a trustworthy man. You must be somebody that is open so that what is open in us can find an entrance in you. Do you get what I'm saying? Pray for you, we pray for you that you should also be open. Go to chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians. I was going, I'm just taking you through scriptures this morning. Are you blessed? 2 Corinthians 7. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Open your hearts to us. Are you seeing it? We are open to you. You are open to us. And it's emphasizing the open your heart. Tell your neighbor, open your heart. So why you don't open your heart anymore? Don't trust. 
know why preachers don't open their heart. They don't trust anybody. Everybody is doing measured, measured flow. Kaku. That's what I'm saying. Everybody is calculating. That's what I say. Church. Allah will have a pretty much. When I woke up, one guy that he was was not saying where I used to be before. Uh, something, something. I stifled my prophetic flow. Because when I met this man of God, I said, I just left here many years ago. Stifled your prophetic flow. And no one stifled prophetic flow. I said, not you. Maybe that we conclude. I said, it's in that it's okay, but it must be somebody else. That's how to keep your mind, to give yourself sanity. So when people leave a place, they can see anything. That we, that we, the people I did, I joined, did naming ceremony for their first, second, third, still said things. And they were stifled. We paid hospital the, the bill for their delivery. <laughs> Leo. People will open church and say, come, come and be using it for meeting. Professors, what you want to prophesy? This type food there. Okay. Preacher, when you hear such things, do you know the next thing you are doing? You get measured. And somebody is catching too much fire. How is moving? Power is moving. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, they can. Say yes, sir. Yes, why somebody shouting yes, sir? Too much in the sermon. Get measured. See me after service. Are you okay? Hope no problem. And some of you too. What is Gaila or become? Today is your day. Today is your day. You know that the last time somebody prophesied like that, he ended in your pocket. As I'm preaching, I'm closing the pocket. The Lulu and Ben. I for the light that they lay. Nothing else. When the church becomes like that, stifle the flow of God. Because we become too measured. And why are we measured? Because of trust issues. No way. I'm going to show you this morning that every I will have. Walk, we walk, be able to boast about these people. This is what they will do. I hope I can boast about you. People, when we are signing guarantors from in this when Michael got his job, one day I received the call. But this is some director of the directorate of security, yes. But do you know Michael Baba? I know him. He said, You stay in, they were giving me my own address. Your house is this, this is where you stay. When he came back for us, I said, Sit down. And then, now DSS have my record because of you. He was working in a very security sensitive place. So they... I said, Don't worry. Hey, hey, hey. I've not worked in bank three months. What did... you have started managing two accounts? And you come and say, Praise the Lord. See, our God is a miracle working God. No. Pastors have run into crisis because they found people. They posted in and they didn't know who they are. Everybody has become Asian. Don't write that. Anything that concerns money, go right to. Hope I can trust you. Because today you can be preaching to people for one year and can't trust them. But you don't know what they do. Immediately they leave. 
Because most of the time, when they are just there, they are just listening to you. Mm, yes, sir. That, that's all. That's all. I'm not here talking to you about so I'm talking to you about you. You didn't come here this morning to hear Bible story. You came here to see yourself in a mirror. I'm when police station me on wow with one nail. I'm here telling you integrity is everything. Trust the law. Trust the law. Trust the law. Some of you now you are trusting yourself. Already enter the theory. Don't say that time. This is our church. There's no love. There's love, oh. Be open as I'm open now. You too open. Because if I feel I'm the one open and you are not close, and you are close. Head of here, we see no DNA that looks like what I bought. So in, I used to see. Him. But the Lord will heal me and heal you. I thought you say better, amen. That we will have an unrestrained flow to one another. The church needs to have an unrestrained flow again. Male and female. Hey, somebody is talking to your wife, you are looking. Of women, what very cool, what very cool nonsense, Lori. You are not even sure. It is return back. When you hear it's with pastor, you have rest. Follow me. Some people are, you are preaching, I are preaching. I tell you. Confess on Nothing they do, but I love it. Our pastor, come on, this roof, pastor. <laughs> you know, pastor just to say, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open. <laughs> That's why, as I'm preaching, that person say, round of sir, round of round of service, because there's somewhere they are going. Do you get what I'm talking about? This is how we shut the flow. Show sure where your church members are. Of them are Pentecostals in the afternoon, white garment at night. I won't say more than that. Because some of you are already looking at me. Are you the one? Second Corinthians 7, verse 13 to 16. <laughs> Glory to God. Therefore, we have been comforted in your comfort. We rejoice exceedingly more. For the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For if in anything I have boasted to him about you, I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting to Titus was found true. I know faithless people. They will trust God. They will win by righteousness. Station for people. Anything I've boasted to him about you, I'm not. Our boast not become our shame. Why yes? Son, those children, right? Doesn't stop here. Are you following me, church? Everything we put in was proven true. And his affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling you received him. Therefore, I rejoice and have Someone say, I have confidence in you. How did we journey from trust no man? Well, I have confidence in you. In, in. The sons are not the ones that break people's activity. Confidence. By the time a relationship does breaks, you give what? Valid reason. I just come to you and say, as I was going, I heard from the year, and then something changed in my mind. Will it work? Everybody that, that have done it before knows that which pastor move. Let me say, pastor, trust you to bring who you want to marry, but. Think the person. I, I said, Did you see the person? He said, I saw it. Did you see the person? He said, I saw it. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. 
Or you come back and say something happened to your dream. Not like you now go somewhere and you now see one girl that has long skirt. You now say, ah, oh, I didn't meet this person before I met my wife. You have your wife. Say amen. You have met your wife. Hold on to her tightly. Amen. I'm serious. I have confidence in you in everything. I can. I have confidence in you. I know you will frustrate the grace of God. When you don't see Jonathan right in your presence, you know it's not with a, it's not with an arrow. It's fighting the battle on another flank. You don't get what I'm talking about. I have confidence in you in everything. He's obedient in presence, he's obedient in absence. When you are on the sea, I believe you are not smuggling home. Often he only reacts to bad send you. God said that there will be a reaction. I'm the father and the Lord of the oil smuggling. Ah, like that is allowing us to, to line up for petrol. I, I bought at 300. Come on now. You are doing all of you that their office is well in your car. You will fail. I didn't say anything. Bless the sinner and take the consequence. That destroying the system will come to us, we'll bless them. And we we'll now be shouting. That's why God does not hear the prayer of the church. Because we are part of the problem. They're just looking for sudden breakthroughs at the expense of every value. And I come back. God, why did you give us this type of person? Don't pray very well. You will have a person you don't want. Everyone will not fall. As, is, it the, is it today that Nigeria has been raised? When I was young, they would say, God is using our leaders to beat us because we are disobedient. After, after I ask the question, where will the beating stop? Almost half a century of my life, they are saying they are beating us. Where will I enjoy the beating? No, no, I won't say that. But Nigeria will be saved. I thought you'd say better. Amen. God will remember the cries of yours. All the prayers you prayed in secret. All the choices and values you have raised up for his kingdom. And God will visit Nigeria. I thought you would say better. Amen. I trust God in the name of Jesus. Things will not remain the same. I trust God in the name of Jesus. God will do something for our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians 8 from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. That in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of the liberality. By bear witness and according to their ability, and yes, beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Somebody say, I bear witness. Somebody say, I bear witness. You know the meaning of that word. I can attest. I can attest the reason that you are willing to serve the kingdom of God. I can, I can be sure that your increase is for God's kingdom. I can be sure your increase is for God's kingdom when I receive your desires when you don't even have it. And I can attest. So I bear witness that according to your ability, yes, beyond the ability, you are freely willing. Continue. Imploring with us much urgent, with much urgency that we receive, receive the gift and fellowship of the ministry of, to the same. So much is packed there. Not only as we have hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. And them to us by the will of God. So we ought to see Titus that he, as he has begun, he will complete this grace. There is a grace that works in you that can make 
us to that you are enough confidence in what God is doing. That you are a different person from that which is prevalent around you. It's a, it's a grace. And, and so that grace is was I saw it reflected in Titus. May that grace walk in your life this morning. I thought you would say better. Amen. Go to verse 16. But thanks be to God who put the same earnest care for you in the art of Titus. For he not only accepted the exhortation, but being more diligent, he went to you of his own accord. And we sent with him the brother whose praises in the gospel throughout all the churches. Not only that, but who was also chosen by churches to travel with us with this gift, which is administered by us to the glory of the Lord himself, and to show your ready mind. Avoiding it as anyone should blame us of the lavish gift which is administered by us. Yes, continue. Providing honorable things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. We have sent with them our brother, whom we have often proved diligent in many things. Some have said proved. Now much more diligent because of the great confidence what? Which we have in. Are you seeing the word again? Second time, say, we have Great. Yeah, the reason why the church is moving slow. We keep laboring. Things in the world. Why? Because most people you are laboring to are close when you are open. Sometimes when they are open, you are close. Because we have great confidence. I trust God that you love God's kingdom. Who loves God's kingdom here? Ah, uh, yes, God is going to sort your marriage, sort your relationship, sort your job. But the greatest confidence I have in you is that everything I'm teaching here is going to expand your view of God's kingdom beyond just your own immediate desires. Are we together? That's why I can bring a missionary. You know, something happened during the last pure language congress when Apostle Badek never informed the church that I was going to. I looked at his work and I said, this man is doing a great work. And as he finished, he didn't know. You did not know. I was the only one that knew. Have great confidence. I believe that when you see right courses, you will join it. Please continue like that. This man is doing a work. Sure. When he came to me, I said, shock sure what your people gave to me. My mission for this December is done. You know what I'm saying? I, I trust God that you will be a kingdom financier. That when you hear of right causes of God, your heart will jump towards it. I trust God that you are not the ones that are gaining to consume upon your lust. Are you following me? I trust God that you are well taught. I have great confidence in you. That you will not leave this church. And go to a place where you are hearing nonsense. Put your money in things that, that God is fighting. Think that this confidence will truly be proven. I thought you would say it better, amen. This is not trusting in men. This is trusting in what the grace of God makes in men. Men in their natural state. But when we saw this grace, we told Titus to complete it. My prayer is that this grace will be completed. Uh, I said it will be completed in all of us in the name of Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 1 to 5. Glory to God. Now concerning the ministering to the saints, it's superfluous for me to write to you. For I know your willingness about which I boast of you, the Macedonians. Are you seeing? From chapter 8, 9, they're saying one consistent flow. What's the flow? Now, the word boast is, I attest of you. I've not seen a pastor that slap his wife. Like when you come with the son, I say, ah, 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 slap me. I say, ah. 
10, 12 years we have traveled around. See me branch somewhere to see one woman. As of mama. As of mama. So she lady. And Lord, between me, don't go where God's eyes can't follow me. And boast of you to the Macedonians that Achai was ready years ago. Your zeal had, had stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent brethren. Lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that I have said you may be made ready. I told people you are ready. Let them make a demand. You are ready, ready. But after I finished that thing, <laughs> I quickly sent brethren. Go check them. Are they still ready? Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we not mention you should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time. Speaking to you ahead of certain things this year because this year, God needs you to be a trustworthy man. Make adjustment. I go to you ahead of time to prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you have previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity not of grudging obligation. When people do things because they are compelled to do it, it's not generosity. Because the reason why we have this friction in the church is most people are just doing grudging obligation. And they work out good. Because you cannot, you can't imagine you not doing and if you are not the type of food is that will flow, but that's not what we need here. We need men we can trust. We need men. Are you following me? Are you hearing me? The fear of God in you that will prepare you for this level of confident boasting we have of you. Let me tie. Compare two treasurers. One is Judas. I'll show you the treasurer who sold his master. The one who died for his master. And both happened. God raised us as faithful. Second Samuel 20 verse 24. Bible mentioned the name of a man. He was called Adoram. He was in charge of what? Of revenue. Every governor will tell you one of the most important officers is the commissioner of finance. Or accountant general. You saw the one that Nigeria had. They saw 91 billion missing. Put, <laughs> they don't put thieves in charge of revenue. They will waste all your labor. In Jesus' name, you won't waste God's grace. Adoram was in charge of revenue. When rebellion happened against the house of David, in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 18, it was the death of Adoram that signified it. Verse 18. King Rehoboam sent who? Adoram. Do you know the name of, meaning of Adoram? My Lord is exalted. This was a man that was sent by his Lord. Even the day he knew his, the, the people of his Lord were hungry with him. Because they've gone to Rehoboam. Rehoboam had told them, little finger of my hand is thicker than my father's loins. My father beat you with stripes. I'll beat you with scorpions. People went away in anger. Then the king sent him. Who was in charge of revenue. Question is, 
should he go? But all Israel stoned him with stones and he died. This was how it was announced to the house of David that we have rebelled. Something precious must be touched for you to touch, for you to understand people's loyalty. Revenue. When Rehoboam had it, he mounted and fled. But there was another treasurer. In John chapter 12, verse 1 to 7, his name is John uh, Judas. The woman poured oil at the feet of Jesus. And he was angry. That was the angry. The Jesus, this should have been so. And given to the poor. This he said. Not that he cared for the poor. Because he was a thief. And he had the money box. And he used to take what was put in it. And Jesus said, let her alone. For she has kept this for the day of my burial. If you read that story properly. In the rendition of it in Matthew 26, verse 7 to 16, you will discover that it was immediately after Jesus spoke in that language to Judas that the Bible said Judas went to the Pharisees and said, what, should you, what will you give me to release this man? What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? Why? Because suddenly, for the first time, Jesus rebuked him and said, let her pour it. Suddenly discovered that if they've sold this thing and put it in the basket, he had imagined what was agreeable to him. And when he didn't get that from Jesus' side, what did he do? He shifted and went to the Pharisees. He said, what will you give me? My own is just to that 30 pieces of silver. And from that day, he began to think of what he will do to betray him. What betray is important. Pressure and, and steer you to a point that you will betray all the things you have held on. In this world, get ready. In this season, the reason why there are very few trustworthy men is because most of us crack under pressure. Betray people, to betray our families. Are you following me? How much? How much is enough? Thank God for faithless assembly, but I still speak because I have confidence in you. Today, people go out. They also know where? I don't know where my husband and wife has been today, but anyway, I just trust the Lord. People immediately, they can, they, their phone is not, is not behaving properly. They are under pressure. Some of us, our pain threshold is too low. Immediately, it's an immediate pressure. You think everybody sitting there don't have pressures? Then last night it was a band, and then and then then, and then, then, then okra we ate. You ate. You ate. Because you didn't eat seafood. That would have given you a running stomach. Because some of you, your stomach even react to those things. Yeah, it's not you. He lost his ministry, Judas. Because the Bible says he took the wages of iniquity. In Jesus' name, you will not put your hands in iniquity. Even if iniquity is what promises increase, it's not your portion. The wages of iniquity. But what he doesn't know is that the wages of iniquity is not money. The 
the wages of iniquity is death. That 30 pieces they gave him was a screensaver to hide the real wages. That was why the day he wanted to go and embrace the real wages, read your Bible. He took the 30 pieces of silver and threw it in the temple because the piece of silver said, We have finished our work. And they went to embrace the real wages of iniquity. Which is death. Ah, that's good. I will mind that another day. That was just came. Because I remember in Acts 1, that's what they called what he received. He bought a land with the wages of iniquity. You know what that land became? A burial ground. That's the Bible showing you that what he thought was increased for him was death. He lost his place. You won't lose your place. I thought you would say better. Amen. I said you won't lose your place in Jesus' mighty name. Church. There are things I want you to set your mind on. Make it your challenge. Of those two treasurers, who will you want to be? People say, none. Adoram died. Jonathan died. But Jonathan was exemplary. Did you read your Bible that some people refused deliverance because of a better resurrection even if this life does not deliver what you think it should deliver i will still stay if faith you must be able not to love your life unto death your capacity to resist system must increase this year are you following me don't break down under every false promise. Break down. Even if it's not coming, Jesus is Lord. Are you hearing me, church? He is. He will make a way. His Lord is faithful. I will not be unfaithful. Because if I'm unfaithful, the Bible says he remains faithful. I'm only going to do a disservice to myself to be unfaithful. It will never change God. If I'm unfaithful, I'm just doing a disservice to myself. I believe the Lord will help you this day. What am I calling you for today? I want to send you forth everywhere you go. Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. That's what you should fight for. Everything that opens out of your mouth, let it be something you can hold on to and say, this is the truth. Fight for it. I wish, I wish still together. I say, fight for it. Matthew 24, verse 9 and 10. Matthew 24, verse 9 and 10. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. You will be hated by nations for my name's sake. And when that pressure is much, what will happen? Many will be offended and will what? Betray one another and what? Hate one another. The pastor is the one that brought me to this problem. He was the one that said I should choose God. I want you to tell Satan, it's your greatest strain of my life. I will be a trustworthy person. I will do what is right. Are you following me? I have overcome the world. I, someone say, I have overcome the world. It does not matter all the pressure the world is putting on me today. I have overcome the world. Jesus was hungry, but he was no less son of God. After he came out of the wilderness, he was hungry. He was hungry. The devil said, turn the stones to bread. But he said, our man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God. Bread is important, but it's not going to stand alone. I have another life that you don't know. Well, I want you to go into the midst of challenging situations and say, my life is not bread alone. 
fulfillment for me is not building alone it's not having five houses everywhere are you following me fulfillment for me is that i can say i live by every word that proceed from the mouth of god are you hearing me church god must find such faithful men on the face of the earth and you and i by the grace of god will be one of them i thought you would say better amen matthew 5 33 to 37 don't swear just let your yes be yes and your no be no somebody say let your yes be yes ask yourself how many things have you changed your mind on this year alone this year this is what 22nd how many things have you changed your mind? this is me this is me God needs us to be a people that are yes and yes are you following me i love god i i believe in righteousness not just because he delivers what i want even if he delivers contrary to the to the cry of my flesh my yes is yes my no is no i love righteousness i hate iniquity he re-emphasizes it in james 5 verse 12 let your yes be yes james 5 12 don't swear by art, but let your yes be yes, your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Now, that's the standard of God. Lady, you are beginning to do like this. Yorubas call it Sonlani. Is this the final quotation? <laughs> And it's not easy, especially when you know that there is bill waiting at home. Don't receive a job, you know the money they are offering you will not do it just because you are in under pressure for money. Then move 500. Let your yes. <laughs> are you hearing me now? And you'll know after you have settled food and drink, there is faith. It's who you are. God will give you understanding. What makes us this type of man is the grace of God. Stand to your feet this morning and receive grace to be such men that the boasting of God over your life won't fail. An investment of God over your life will speak. I just want you to receive grace. Let grace go through you 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 pray pray to the lord this day pray to him thank you jesus that you are one who have received the grace of god and it will not be in vain i'm not moving in the direction that the world is moving in the world is moving in the direction of unfaithfulness but by grace i move in the direction of god the world is moving in the direction of unfaithfulness but in the by the grace of god i abide in faithfulness i must be a man that god can find trustworthy faith will be found in me despite my waiting thank you jesus mm. i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Yeah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. Yeah, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Say, Father, I put my hands in your hand this year. 
I will only move at your pace. I'm a co-worker with God. I'll move at the direction of the Lord. I will not be driven by pressure. I, won't, I don't mind waiting upon the Lord. I don't mind moving at the pace of the Lord. I don't mind moving. The, all I need will come. All I need will come. But I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Help me to wait. Let grace be poured. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I can't do it by myself, but let grace be sufficient. Somebody receive grace to wait. Grace to wait. I don't know what you are trusting God for, but this morning we don't mind waiting. Like that widow, she kept coming back. 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 Oh, I don't mind waiting, Jesus. To love the Lord and to hate iniquity. I will not put my hands in sin for, for the expectations of my heart. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Grace, pour your grace out. Pour your grace out. Pour your grace out. Pour your grace out. Shandorobo Shandariada Bashandolobo Diada. I ready. I refuse to become a traitor because of the pressures of the time. I rebel against every betrayal spirit in the name of Jesus that it will not be rooted in my soul nor in my actions in the name of Jesus. Lord, I wait upon you because you will come for me. You will come for me. You will come for me. Pray that prayer for yourself this morning. Oh, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I know, I know you are faithful. I will not run. I know you will come forth for me. I know you will help me. So I will wait on you. I don't know what you want to do, but I know you will do something good. I know you will hear my cry. I know you will hear my cry. I know you will hear my cry. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Sing it one more time. I don't mind waiting. Come and save me. He will come and save me. Say to the weary one, you're not to show you how. He will come and save me. It's a very powerful, destructive tendency. Some people are afraid to approach their next birthday. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything with prayer and thanksgiving. I know you have valid requests. Your requests are valid, but your anxiety is invalid. Are you following? Because your anxiety says God will not come. 
your request says i have a god are you following me and so uh, i'm going to make my request known but i'm not going to be choked by what the enemy is trying to do i i know there are some of us that are desperate for certain things to happen and i'm not under playing that desperation that widow kept coming back and god will answer speedily uh, i thought you say amen for things you have waited for one year two years three years four years five years and the waiting has become very intense and desperate their answers will be speedy and uh, those seva the bible says he sent his word his word runneth swiftly upon the face of the earth lord this year let your word be swift and the robo seek abaya daniel was praying he said and an angel was caused to come swiftly to me to give me understanding in the place of your despair you will not wait too long angels of mercy are released to fly swiftly in the name of jesus for she is an unwise child she should not have stayed too long in the place of childbearing by the swiftness of God's mercy your miracles will come freely and speedily in the name of Jesus God said I'm not that unjust God judge I have born long with my people and I will answer them speedily for the waiting of five years let the god give you an harvest in one year of five years Ago Sunday, Abia Tesi, Broma Toseva, then the Bolusi Fradi, Asobro Matande, Karade Boshida. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten in the mighty name of Jesus. The years that Nigeria economy ahead of you, the years that your indecisions ahead of you, the Lord God of heaven will restore. I see restorations in the name of Jesus. Asande de Bosade da Habo, Evini Akreta Belusafa, Andromededa. He will come and save you. He will show up. This is the set time. This is the accurate time. This is the season in which the Lord makes all things beautiful. In their time, in their time, Marosa, in the Nebotelli, Angre no Parose, Fandi Atomia. For every waiting, every secret crying, let your testimony become public. Let your testimonies become public. Let it be something people can relate with, can touch can hold can praise god with you for receive it receive it receive it in jesus mighty name but will he find faith when it comes will you not have gone to the right or the left will he not have looked like somebody because the same lack of trust we have in god is the one we, we eventually transfer with men because it's the same way you love God that you have to love men and you cannot claim you don't love men and you love God there is always a direct link are you following me in that virtue as you leave it with God the extent in your relationships with men are you following me but in Jesus name I see you as a, as, as, as a house planted on a rock as, as I said your feet are your feet is established uh, you, are, you, you, you are not moved you are not moved them that trust in the lord like they are like mount zion which are not which is not moved you are not moved you see 2023 is not changing your value systems the what you said years past you will still be saying it that your god is faithful that your god is able and that your god shows up in due season that your god is faithful and your god is able and that it shows up in due season that your God is faithful, that your God is able, and that he shows up in this season. You will not be robbed of that testimony. You will not be robbed of that proclamation. You will not be robbed of that proclamation in the name of Jesus Christ. It will show up for me. 
None of you shall cast their young. None of you shall be barren. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever you do shall prosper. For he that fears the Lord, whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever this year brings, it is going to turn for prosperity. This is your resolution. This is your assurance. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will go ahead of you. The Lord will cause you to have rest in the name of Jesus and grace will walk in you oh you'll be open you'll be open God will have a free flow in your life to walk with you to walk through you to walk in you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ say I want you to laugh at the face of the devil this morning do you know why because it will surely come Someone say, we surely come. Give me that Isaiah 25 as we sing it again. Isaiah 25, I think it's verse 6. It will surely come. Is it? Give me verse. See verse. Let's look at verse 5. Is it 35? Are you sure? I think it's 25. Your car, there's, I'm coming. Come. Glory to God. All right. Okay. It's, I'm looking for 25 9. 25 9. It will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for Him and He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for Him and He will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. It can't start being unfaithful on my own case. This is our God. We have waited for Him and He will not come and be explaining. He will not come and be consoling. He will come to save. He will not come. Jesus didn't go into the house of Jairus and said, you know what? Be comforted. He chased away every person that is crying. Daughter, arise. I said, let your faith arise. And what you think has gone, let it come back to you. Let it come back to you. This year you will see the certainty of faith. Oh my God, the Lord who has had you in the secret place will reward you in the hope of. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, He will come and save you and you will testify. Sing that song one more time. He will come and save me. Sing it, personalize it. He will come and save you have lifted your eyes to that seem totally out of your reach that you are only looking at and cannot come to you your hands will touch it lift up your eyes Abraham for as far as your eyes can see will be the possession it is not only for your imagination it's for your experience this year that imagination that the lord has planted in your heart that has traveled far you receive a performance you receive a performance 
as far as your eyes have seen it will come into your hands in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus what you have named in your mind you will name it physically what you have handled in your mind you will handle it physically the Lord anoint your imagination and bring performance to your expectations in Jesus mighty name somebody give the Lord a shout of victory hallelujah 